Hello, quite a few of you have been asking me if I'm going to get a cover for the Arrow since it's parked up outside here at Red Hill. Well, the answer, yes I am. And today I'm heading off to get India Victor measured up. are up, gears up, uh, gear auto extension is enabled, 1003 and uh, we're on track to Guildford, temperatures, pressures are okay. So we're airborne, we're just north of Dorking, talking to the, well, listening to the Farnborough uh, radar frequency and uh, we're listening to their listening squawk or we, we, we selected their listening squawk and uh, we're just settling off in the cruise now India Victor's reached its cruise speed and everything looks good so I had the door seals done on India Victor at the last 50 hour check and they've been keeping out the worst of the rain but I am still getting a few leaks which I'm told is inevitable on the, these uh, old aircraft. And uh, very helpfully, Andy at Vertigo Covers uh, has agreed to make a cover for me. And he's going to uh, measure up India Victor for me. So that's fantastic. Thank you, Andy. That's superb news. Vertigo Covers is based near Southampton. And so I'm flying to Leon Solon to meet up with them. India Victor isn't the first famous aeroplane to receive covers from Vertigo. The company has made them for the Red Arrows, YouTube's Baron pilot, and my mate down under, Stefan Drury, in a, let's say, unique design. I think I'm going to go for something a bit more understated, though. Um, probably a plain black or blue cover, don't know. Um, maybe with the Flight Reporter logo on it, we'll see. So we've uh, squawked 7000, which is the VFR conspicuity squawk here, and uh, we've set Lee ray, uh, information 118925. The information, good morning, Gold Bravo Mike India Victor. We are 13 miles to the northeast, uh, request join. Gold India Victor, we're operating on a 23 right hand circuit. Give me 103, one, one second in second. 23 right hand circuit uh, QFE 1003, copy traffic, we'll join downwind right hand 23. So the airfield's over there, we're going to go out into the Solent a little bit and then track back in north to join uh, downwind. And we're going mixture rich now, so fuel, we're on the left, the right tank, we'll go to the left tank now at 9.55, which is the fullest. Radios we tuned in, engine temperatures and pressures are in the green. We've got the uh, mixture rich now. Direction indicator is aligned. Altimeter 1003. And I've added another A here, and that's for airspace. Been caught out before on joining, where well, you've been so busy on joining you haven't thought about airspace. So we've got uh, Solent airspace to the west uh, and Solent airspace to the north. So we need to keep southeast. Golf India Victor is the start of the downwind, uh, right hand wrong way 2 3. We still don't have the 172 inside. Golf India Victor, one ahead, uh, just turned final, runway 2 3 again. Port final, runway 2 3. Port final, 2 3, Golf India Victor. Brakes. Golf Ultra Romeo final. Brakes undercarriage Golf is down, three greens, green. mixture is rich, fuel is on the tank with the fullest green. contents. We've got the landing light on, we're all strapped in. Altimeter set. And we're heading for the COPS, which is there.
Andy, good to meet you. Good Thank you ever so you. much for helping us out with this. What's no. the plan then for today? How do you go about this? So, best way of doing this is exactly in this circumstance. In a hangar, very little wind, hopefully with the doors closed, um, and nice and dry. So, very traditionally, we take the patterning plastic and we literally wrap your aircraft like a Christmas present, tailoring it to the airframe, marking up all of the aerials and handles and anything that protrudes, um, and designing it basically on the aircraft. Out of habit, I always like to start in this section here. And what you'll find with Pipers is it's very traditional. This surface of the cover tends to be uh, one panel. And then running along this sort of top edge here tends to be the denotion between the uh, vertical and the horizontal side. So you'll see that form, it just naturally always falls that way. So it's, it's almost, yes, you say, you've mentioned tailoring. It is tailoring, isn't mm, it? I mean, that's what you'd much. be doing if you were doing traditional sort of clothing tailoring, isn't yep. it? And do you do this for every aircraft or do you, do you build, have you building up or have you built up a pattern of, of all the aircraft that there are? So we've got a huge wardrobe already of patterns. Yeah. Um, certain airframes like to do different engine sizes. So from the uh, firewall back might be the same, but the cowlings will be different. So we've got a huge wardrobe of those, but uh, with an opportunity of a hangar like this, we like to always keep the patterns modern. We don't like anything to get old. So it's a good opportunity to bring it inside, get a beautiful pattern because you've got everything going on, ADF wires and pitots and things like that. Yeah, so. it's, it's, the, 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 these, are, these have a few little bits that protrude and <laughs> pop yep. out. So you can see now it's lying flat down the side of the aircraft with a roof panel and a side panel. <laughs> You came, you came from a marine background, didn't you? That's how, mm. that's how, this, how your company came about. Yeah, I've always sailed uh, right from sort of five or six. And uh, when I finished college, uh, took a gap year because I had uni booked, but I, didn't, I wanted to do some more sailing and stuff. As it turned out, I didn't do that much sailing. I did a lot of flying. Um, but I did work for a marine company that produced sails and uh, covers and things like that. Ended up designing the covers. And actually at this airfield, um, did a week's course to solo for gliding. Uh, learned to glide, because uh, my dad flew here, pointed out the sort of, um, the situation he was having when he was buying covers for his aircraft. And uh, we made one, one turned into two, three, four, the whole airfield, the next airfield. And 17 years later, we're doing the world. So yeah, quite different. So it's quite nice to be back here. And what did you bring from the marine world to the aviation world that makes your covers, you would say, arguably better than <laughs> any yes. other that you yeah. can buy. <laughs> so um, everything that's exposed to salt air takes an absolute battering. Um, sailors, we don't tend to be the kindest people to our kit. Um, certainly uh, the rush is to get sailing and not worrying about packing covers away. So it, it's just durability. And with that durability naturally came innovation, making sure that we we're constantly using the right materials, the right fittings, uh, Velcros, things like that. So harsh climates, that's what we were really focusing on for the duration of the year as well, summer, winter, just everything. And it's not just light aircraft covers that you make, is it? No, um, if, if it flies, we do it. So um, in, in the commercial world, um, we provide covers uh, for Boeing. Uh, so we'll do engine covers, wheel covers, piezo covers, all sorts of things, uh, including huge inflatables. Um, in the sort of general aviation world like this, we'll do full sets of covers or just even piezo covers, any, any form. We do gliding, uh, so full sets of covers for the gliders when they're stored outside. Um, we also do um, uh, helicopters, we do private jets for all their engine covers. Um, so yeah, it's, it's limitless. Once Andy finished producing the pattern for India Victor, we took it to his factory. The template was laid out flat on an automated cutting table and then the design digitally recorded. navy blues like that. Andy and I then discuss colours. So this is the material, the silver here is the one that you think would work well on. Yeah, because if we were to put uh, 
logo in black next to it, it really stands out. So Andy, it's been a few weeks and you've been busy sewing, stitching, printing, cutting. all the cutting. <laughs> <laughs> and it's here. Yep, we're finally there. Where is it? The Flying Reporter. Covers with my call sign on there. And of course, your good name on there yeah. as well, of course. I was a bit worried that the cover would be a handful to put on, but Andy demonstrated the technique and it took no time at all. We made that look easy, Andy. <laughs> 18 years of it, we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> I should be trying this myself later back at Red Hill. It's going to keep the frost off the wings yep. in the winter. Yeah. Completely waterproof now, even down those seals yep. um, underneath the door yeah, where it can get seals. into the wing there. And the UV. Yeah. And um, you've managed to carefully navigate around my ADF cable and yes. my, uh, <laughs> my aerial at the back there as well. Yes, the ADF wire, it's, uh, yes, whenever you approach the aircraft and you see an ADF wire, you think, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested, looking at it now and seeing the colour here and thinking, oh, I'm gonna, this is going to get grass stains on it, it's going to get stains and... Um, yeah. Is it, is it, can you clean them? Yeah, what's, absolutely. What's, how do you go ahead with Yeah, that? so uh, light sort of dirt and debris, we just tend to use anything from uh, a wet wipe that's just not got any fragrance in it to just a, a nice soft sponge uh, and bucket of water. Just got to treat it like um, a, a high-end Gore-Tex skiing jacket. You, if you start, or like your skin even, if you start sort of scrubbing the dirt, you're going to force it into the material. So just a little bit of light abrasion. And then, you know, many years to come, if there's quite a build up, we can, uh, we can take the cover back, service it, clean it, and it'll look like new again. We've even got them on the, the tailplane as well. Yeah. Um, and they go on so easily, like a sock, as you saw there. Um, thank you so much. That's great. Not a I at all. no longer need to look at the forecast and think, oh no, it's raining. Yep. I'm going to get a, a wet, damp cockpit again. <laughs> so um, thanks again. That's wonderful. No problem at all. You've been watching The Flying Reporter. Next week, I'll be sharing tips to help make you a safer pilot. Until next time, fly safely, my friends. <laughs>